I don't want to waste your time, so there won't be an intro. With Operation Neon Dawn, Ubisoft released a reworked version of Skyscraper. And at first glance, it's a much better map than the old one. Obviously, there is no meta on this map as of yet, but to give you a bit of a head start, here are three simple strategies that you can try out in Ranked. Let's start with defending what is probably the best site on the map, T and Karaoke. On the old skyscraper, a lot of play was always focused around Geisha. But that wasn't really because Geisha is such a strong position. Rather, it was because Geisha was the only way for the attackers to even get into the map. On the new skyscraper, that's not true anymore. So Geisha attacks are actually pretty terrible now. Of course, that won't stop people from playing those though. So let's look at a few ways to shut them down. The first thing that comes to mind would be to bandit trick the outside wall, just like you did on the old skyscraper. And that is really effective again. In general, bandit tricking is strong on the entire map, but especially here. The most reliable counter, other than playing Maverick, I guess, is to enter in kitchen and then use ash, buck or nades from below. But look at how Ubisoft set this whole thing up here. In order to challenge Bandit, you have to play right below him. There are no shallow angles here. And this opens up some counterplay for the defenders. By opening this wall between pantry and bar, we can get a really nice angle all the way from T to the spot below Bandit. Now, of course the attackers could just try to clear Bandit with nades from Geisha window. And that's certainly a possibility, which is why we need to play Jaeger with all three ADS stacked around Bandit. Naturally, nothing in Rainbow is absolute though, so the attackers will eventually open that wall. But honestly, that doesn't actually do that much. Getting the wall open is one thing, but getting into Geisha is an entirely different thing. The key for the defenders here is to open additional lines of sight into Geisha. Instead of fully reinforcing it off, we only reinforce this wall in Karaoke to Geisha, this wall in Hallway to Geisha, and then we open holes next to the reinforcement, on main stairs, and crucially, we'll also have feet holes in Drum to Geisha. With players in all of these positions, there's just no way for the attackers to get in. At this point, the best bet for the attackers would probably be to apply pressure on the drum player by getting control of Terrace. So in order to prevent this, we'll open this angle in Dragon. And here, it's totally fine to hold an aggressive angle, because if you make proper use of the statue, there are a bunch of angles that are really annoying to deal with. So with this setup, we have a pretty good answer to Geisha attacks. And now, we have a few options as to where to go with this strat. The first option would be to extend our defense all the way into office and exhibition. I mean, we're already holding dragon, and contesting office would be pretty nice against east side attacks. But of course it does thin out our defense a bit, so it's definitely more of an advanced strategy. I think east side attacks are pretty strong, but if all you are seeing are geisha attacks, or if you just want to play something simple, we can also stop our extension in dragon and just reinforce those two walls. For that, we probably want to barricade these doors then, so as to not get surprised by some random crouch walker. Okay, so the only thing we haven't really talked about yet is how we're setting up the actual site. But there also isn't that much to do. For karaoke, we need to reinforce the two corner walls to create the safe spot, and then we'll open a rotation here to get more flexibility. For T, we're just going to use our last three reinforcement on the wall towards the hallway, so we can have a nice time playing behind the bomb. Also, depending on how much map control you still have, don't be afraid to open this wall and play the same angle outside the actual site. That way, you're exposed to way fewer angles. But the downside is that you can't really contribute to a karaoke defense anymore. Speaking of which, on the old skyscraper, you used to create a lot of holes between the sites. But I'd be a bit careful with that now. This position in karaoke is really, really strong, and you don't want to weaken it by making too many feet holes. I'd probably limit holes between the sites to just this small portion over here. Alright, that's pretty much it for the strat. If you're surprised that I haven't really talked about operators yet, that's because you have a lot of freedom here, as long as you play Jaeger and Bandit. Smoke is probably pretty good, because we need a shotgun and the shield is always nice to have. And then I personally would probably play Maestro and Melusi. Gives you more info and also helps against crouch walkers if we have banshees close to the stairs. Okay, so that's how I would defend T. Now for how to attack it. 
I've already said that Geisha is not the play, and I've also said that I like east side takes. But I think there's actually a third way of playing it. A backstairs take. Look at the layout of the map. What's the easiest way to get into the map and close to the site? It's certainly not one of these windows. It's the backstairs door. If we try to enter the map here, there's only going to be a backstairs player and or a karaoke player that can potentially challenge us. So the idea would be to enter the map on the ground floor and then we try to pinch the backstairs player from both sides. In a way, this attack is very similar to the Astro Stairs take you play on Villa Statue. Because once Astro Stairs is lost, you can't play an Astro anymore, and this allows the bathroom attackers to walk in. And it's the same thing here. Once Backstairs is lost, defenders can't play in the Rotate Hole anymore, and now we can walk into the Backstairs door. And that's how we get our foothold. The next objective is going to be to apply pressure on Karaoke. And we do that by having one player Backstairs door, one on Backstairs itself, one restaurant to protect his flank, one Karaoke window, and one Geisha window. And now, there are a few tricks that we can use. First one is that there's actually a gap between the crates in Geisha and the Geisha window. So if you repel on Geisha window, you can actually get an angle all the way to that safe corner in Karaoke. So that's definitely going to come in handy. But there is actually also an alternative way of doing it. Since we have at least two players below, we might as well use that to pressure the Karaoke player from below. And if we look at where that corner is situated, I can't help but feel that Ubisoft wants us to do exactly that. I mean, we could even open that from outside the map and we'd be perfectly safe doing it. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. Okay, so now we have two different ways of forcing the Karaoke Defender to move from that corner into this corner. And that's where we put the nail into the coffin. See this pillar in the middle of the room? Well. If we get our protractors out, we can send over a nice surprise. And just like that, we cleared the site. Admittedly, the round is not won yet. Especially a potential Geisha player might still be a pain to deal with. But honestly, the attackers are in a pretty good position here. We have a clear way into the site, we threaten a karaoke repel, we threaten a Geisha backstab, a mainstairs backstab, and even a shrine backstab. And if push comes to shove, we can still go for gunfights around T. So all in all, this backstairs attack seems like a viable way of attacking the Karaoke T bomb site. Next up is the second best bomb site for the defenders, office and exhibition. In a way, Ubisoft didn't actually change that much about the site, but the few changes they did make make all the difference. Because without the east and north side windows, there are actually playable spots on site now. I know, crazy concept, right? So let's look at how we can keep it that way. Obviously, we are going to reinforce the outside walls. The strategy of opening this wall to threaten runouts doesn't really work anymore, because the attackers can repel on the south side now. I mean, you still threaten runouts, but opening that wall isn't worth it anymore. So if we want to protect the office wall, we're going to need to bandit trick it. And like I said before, bandit tricking is pretty strong on this map. There are no drone holes, and there also aren't any gaps above the walls. But this particular bandit trick is actually not that strong, because unlike before, we can't really prevent the attackers from going in below. So in the long run, this wall will always be open, so we better prepare for that. First of all, we're going to reinforce two walls in Office to Lounge, just so we have a position to fall back to. But the actual defense of the breach comes in form of reinforcing the right wall between Exhibition and Office, and opening the middle panel. That way, we get some nice pixel angles around the bomb frame to control the breach. And this hole is actually a 2 for 1 special, because it also opens an angle from lounge to the exhibition window, so we can cover this jump in. Which is what the exhibition player is most afraid of. With that, we are in pretty good shape against an office breach. But what about the other two outside walls? For both of these, the dragon player saves the day once again. Against the Death Breach, you can play some nasty angles around the statue, and the same is true for the Catwalk Breach too. And yes, I realize there is a window right behind us, but more on that later. For the time being, let's look at what we're doing against a potential Geisha or Karaoke clear. In a way, we're now facing the same problems as on our T-Defense. 
how far are we going to extend our defense? We could have players in Drum, Karaoke and Geisha, but with that, the distances between the defenders are just too great and it's going to be difficult to actually play together here. So ultimately, I settled on just extending towards Drum and the Mezzanine area. But there is a really cool idea here that does actually allow us to contest the entire half of the map. If we place a mirror window on the back T wall, we can get angles on Geisha window, Karaoke window and backstairs. Combined with having these feet holes in Drum to Geisha again, we actually make it difficult for the attackers to get a foothold. And I know what you're thinking. This mirror position is kind of dodgy because of that angle from below. In order to help against that weakness, Mira is going to use her proximity alerts around the ground floor and will also have a roamer playing below. That last part actually also has a different benefit. By making holes below the mirror window, we can shoot off Hibana pellets from below, which hopefully slows down the attackers. Because that's really all we can hope for here. The mirror window might seem pretty strong, but it's just the fact that Mira is hopelessly overworked here and you can't really expect to hold that side of the map forever. Especially the Geisha Breach is somewhat of a weakness here. In case the attackers are trying to make use of that though, you can consider opening part of this wall, which gives you a really long angle all the way from side over to drums. And together with a smoke playing close to the ledge, you should be able to contest this. Okay, so that's the general idea of the strategy. Now let's flesh it out a bit. The one mirror window we have left will go on the middle lounge wall. We're going to use two Maestro Evil Eyes in Terrace and Office. Melusi is placing her gadgets in Terrace, Front Desk and Exhibition. And now the only important gadget left is Smoke Shield. And this is where we come back to the Dragon Player and how he's exposed to the Shrine window. An interesting idea here is to place the shield at the top of the stairs in order to block the angle. Of course, you could still repel on the window, but honestly, that's not really a great time, because any attacker is very weak to the backstairs run out here. But as always, nothing in Rainbow is absolute. If you have perfect information, you can always counter everything. So when making a strategy, we just have to accept that. Alright, that's it for the actual strategies. If you want to try them out yourself, there's a link to the final slides in the description. But honestly, this video might be more valuable to you if you focus on the concepts that are used in those strategies, like bandit tricking, opening geisha, using dragon, or maybe even this mirror idea. All of these concepts are not reliant on one particular strategy. So as long as you keep those in mind, you can build your own strategies around them. All in all, Skyscraper seems like a pretty interesting map. It's not obviously defender or attacker favored, and it also offers multiple ways to play each side. If you're curious, I think the site rotation should be T, office, bedroom, and then barbecue. All right, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new and thanks for watching.